Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. And today we have another one, one versus one on some more. Yes, indeed, we're having another one right here on this map. But it is for a different reason and not just to show up this map, which I do like actually. But on to the two opposing forces in the southern half. We do have me, me, me. Okay, I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce that. We'll just be calling him Mr. Me. Hauptmann Me of the 706th Bodenständige Grenadier Division, ready to hold off the Yanks in this small, quiet town by the river. And to face them, we have Hick of the 1st Infantry Division. Hick. I'm not entirely sure why he called that. I do know in Danish, Hick means Hick up, so it could possibly be that. But I don't know. Anyhow, we shall be seeing these two forces face off against each other. Plenty of engineers being sent out, it seems. Quite interesting. A bit unusual. And we're seeing pioneers being rushed off as well. Possibly might be training a few a bit of those. And we see four engineers already being queued up. This could be the beginning of the infamous four engineers sniper start, which, as the name sort of reveals, it does involve four engineer teams and some snipers afterwards. We'll have to see. And we're seeing three pioneer teams and a fourth pioneer team. I don't think there's a real like, sort of variant of that for the Wehrmacht. But of course, I suppose he could go for four pioneers and then snipers as well if he would like so. But it's certainly be interesting. No weapon support center yet though. In the field. There we go. Fourth engineer team on the field. And apparently moves off ignoring the whole weapon support center bit. Might be a bit of a delayed weapon support center pioneers. Rushing out to seize whatever they think belongs to the fatherland and the 706th. <coughs> And we do see these engineers setting up an observation post rather swiftly on this point. Concerning mean plenty of flame throws to support. And possibly also a lot of mines. And we see these pioneers quickly blocking off this road. Which certainly won't be much help against all of these engineers. We'll easily be able to cut through it and possibly even overpower these pioneers while they're laying it down. Pioneers forced to pull back and there's no real support for them as of yet. And these engineers will be swiftly cutting through this but why I'm rendering a bit pointless. And we do see weapons support center finally going down. And what is this? Heavy machine guns. Interesting very indeed. Certainly could be he's trying a sort of four pioneers, lots of heavy machine guns sort of start. Not that I've actually ever seen that or heard about it. And if it is indeed snipers we'll be seeing out from Mr. Hick. I wager it'll probably come to very awfully short since the usual method of dealing with snipers isn't heavy machine gun teams. Just for the fun of it, and we do see some barbed wire going here to protect this point from harassment, which is the usual thing most veteran players do to sort of prevent it from being taken away since it will usually be the only medium yield fuel point for the southern or northern players. The rest of all fuel points are low yield, so keeping that one near to the base is usually Rather quite a priority, and we see these pioneers are quite busy laying down. Oh, I don't know how much barbed wire. Really hoping to impede the movement of the opponent's infantry, and of course, maximize the effect of the heavy machine gun teams. And we do see another one, no foot gunners or snipers, or even a bike yet. Engineers engaging these pioneers. And getting into this cafe, which will certainly not be to the advantage of these... Pioneers, and yes indeed we will be seeing snipers, so this is most certainly the 4 engineer sniper build, and we see some mines being laid down here and there, to protect some of the strategic points, very good so far. And we see another heavy machine gun being set up right in this building, we'll probably be able to fire down these engineers, and there we go, blasting away, suppressing the first team, will the other get away? Pioneers moving in for the hunt, but being stopped by a small fence. 
First engineer team getting out of the arm. Pioneers going for this fuel point. And engineers, yes, apparently he didn't think about it. And if you set a longer route and it's being blocked, the units would automatically, after some stage, run away. And they won't. So in this case, he probably wasn't paying attention. And in that case, the engineers were being cut down by the MG42. Second engineer team also getting pinned down. Pioneers continuing to lay down. More barbed wire, quite keen on this, setting up kill zones, which is certainly not a bad idea, but the sniper will rather ruin that idea. And we see some further dueling between pioneers and engineers right here. And the sniper has revealed himself first shot is off. Question is, will the Wehrmacht commanders react to it? And we see the third HMD te team. So really we see, we're seeing a sort of reversed variant of the four engineer sniper start for pioneers and lots of HMGs not very effective though considering yes he is being face off with snipers that's rather unfortunate there we go second sniper going to get very nasty and these hay machine gunners will have to get out of there before the snipers clear them out two kills so far and we see barbed wire and tank traps being laid down here. A bit curious though. Not sure why. But he seems rather interested in just joining up all of his positions. And usually, which I can usually suspect means that he's probably going to delay this. It's usually when you go a lot of heavy machine guns for example. You're generally hoping to keep your opponent at arm's length until you can get something really big and then pound him into the dirt with usually tanks. On oh, the Sturm Armory, we will have to see what he will be going for. But we see the first Wehrmacht sniper. Not cloaked though, and he's going to get revealed. Oh dear, no. Get him cloaked. Get him cloaked. Sniper's firing away, and the German sniper is not cloaked. What on earth is he doing? Squad lost. Bike moving in. I'm, that was incredibly risky, and it was certainly by sheer luck that he didn't lose that sniper. I mean, goodness gracious. And we see mines being laid down right here in the retreat path. And let's just brief the pause. Why is he doing that? It's because he's being really damn clever. We have seen the bike, and of course, any retreating snipers will be easy targets for a bike that's coming down to hunt them down. Except if there's a mine in the way, in which case, boom, and there's no more bike. So it's actually a pretty clever move to set up a mine right in the retreat path to sort of cover the sniper from any sort of being hunted down. And it's certainly something worth noting. And let's return to the scheduled match. But really, that was awfully lucky. I mean, really, moving a sniper uncloaked into an area with other snipers, that's... Oh, makes me shudder. And further tank trap being laid down. He's really keen on just locking off as many zones. And of course, probably going to set this up as a sort of death zone for any armor as well. It's a really defensive strategy and of course they can work but really with snipers against HMTs in some sense it's probably going to be the Americans getting away with this in particular since they've probably been investing less since Mr. Me had to get up a sniper and a biker of his own to actually deal with this since the HMTs just can't at all. And now we're seeing a supply yard so we'll probably be seeing either a armor depot or a motor pool I suspect a armor depot since he's actually saving up a lot of fuel and manpower so again there we see the other variant again going for something supply that can support that can actually deployment. somehow freak the opponent out if he's not really properly prepared for it and then holding the line on so you can get some armor to use it pioneers hitting mines and continuing rather large numbers right down here which is certainly going to work since there's absolutely no sniper presence and again with a bit of aggression you can probably use this again Sniper's heavy focus against Mr. Hick. Since snipers are pretty slow in a sense, and of course aren't really good at taking territory. They can certainly be effective, but it can certainly also backfire if his opponent knows what he's doing. And there we go, bike to the rescue. And snipers getting rather exposed. The bike didn't apparently fire. So they do get away, had been in a bit quicker to fight, could actually probably done quite a lot of damage. And now the engineers are exposed. Wehrmacht pushing forth here, the 706 having none of that sniper business. 
But they are certainly going to be a bit behind in this since they do have to expend a lot more resources to get into any near sort of that, like as for example Panzer Command. In which case they need to go through several phases and then get the building. Let's have a look at Mr. Hauptmann Me. He is finally getting that part of the phase, but with a bit of proper maneuvering, Mr. Hick can certainly get the arm advantage out first. We shall have to see. Mm, we see the infantry company, and that's also something you usually see going for support units, and then you afterwards use the doctrine to either call in airborne or rangers to act as the infantry. Sort of using elite infantry instead of regular infantry. It's a bit more costly, but again, with for example snipers, it can be rather nasty. And it's certainly one of the reasons why I also dislike snipers. Basically, the fact they can walk right out in the middle of a road cloaked. Anyhow. It can certainly be beaten if the opponent knows what to do. Snipers coming in. Pioneers coming under fire from the Enemy snipers. Oh dear, Pioneer team lost. Will the bikes hit after it? It could of course hit those mines. Oh dear, will it happen? No, it narrowly avoids the mines. And what is he doing? He's just stopping there and getting fired up home by the engineers instead of hunting down those snipers. Hope mind me, are you absolutely daft? Regiment has heavy infantry reserves. And there, a lot of manpower and the first Ranger infantry team. Rangers to lead the way, 6th Ranger Regiment and the bike not really doing much, not really even acting as much for the turn to these snipers. Where's that other sniper? Apparently hiding up here alongside another bike. Intriguing. And we will see the observation post going down here to increase the fuel. And the same has happened here. So certainly mirroring each other's action except that Hauptmann Me is forced to really react a lot more to the Americans. And of course, expend more resources to actually in things that can actually detect snipers. Whereas Hick is taking on the more active approach. Numerous snipers moving in teams, and of course now Rangers as well to really lead the assault. So really nasty sort of business. And there we go, engineers, Rangers, snipers to breach and lead the way. Plenty of barbed wire, but also maybe won't be able to really stand in the way. MG42 sniper firing away. And Rangers manage to breach. They are taking quite a lot of fire from the bike and the MG42. But American snipers are quick to move in. Oh dearie me. Could easily end up badly. And we have the first M10 out right there. And Panzer Command is up as well. We'll have to see how quickly that will go. Rangers trying to hunt down the German sniper. MG42 team cleared out. But it's this motorbike, motorbike quick to move in. And stopping up first. Oh dear, the other bike hit the mine, but these snipers are quick to get away. Again, he seems to just move up to it first, instead of just firing away as soon as you can see them. That's a bit of an unfortunate thing. Just, you know, as soon as you see a sniper with your bike, just click or press A and then attack, move something. Just don't move up there and then...